For the past two years, I've been invited to speak to the students of my university back in Portugal. I usually refrain from speaking about my career and instead focus on leaving them with valuable advice or at least something to chew on for the next couple of years. Some lessons can't be taught, they must be learned. And some of the advice that I'm going to give you today will not make sense until later in your life. Today, I'm speaking to the students out there. To the ones losing sleep, fretting over grades. To the ones parting non-stop. To the ones spending their evenings, or even not sleeping, to finish those pesky projects. Or, God forbid, preparing for that calculus exam that is totally irrelevant for their careers. This is a PSA for cybersecurity students and aspiring professionals. Roll the intro. Today I have five tips for you, and the first tip is results over grades. We have been indoctrinated with the idea that grades are all there is, but the real world works in different ways. For starters, your success in the world depends much less on your technical prowess and much more on your soft skills. Back when I was in university, I lost track of the number of people I saw passing subjects with good grades, but not understanding squat just because they prepared well for a set of topics that happened to be in the exam. Having good grades in school and university is not hard if you know how to play the game and if you are okay with cheating sometimes. You can bullshit your way up to success, but very few people can hold that frame for too long. Companies don't care about grades and good students because these two are usually synonymous with good at following orders. People who are good at following orders are a dime a dozen. People who lead, on the other hand, and lead well, are a rare commodity, as I will discuss on the next tip. Back when I was in school and university, I was never naturally smart. And I had to put twice the work that some of my colleagues would put. However, I ended up becoming much more successful than most because of my ability to think for myself, lead, find problems and address them, and above all, despise order. Order? What do you mean by that? Hold that thought. It will become clear soon enough. Second tip, cultivate a problem-solving or entrepreneurial attitude. One of the biggest problems with schools and universities is that they don't stimulate creativity and free thinking. The reason is simple. Most people need guidance in life. And having a system in place that points people in the right direction is a good starting point. A major consequence of this is that when you are conditioned to having someone telling you what to do, and what to focus on, you forget how to think for yourself. This will translate into jumping from structured job to structured job and being happy with being led instead of leading. What do you mean by structured job? Remember when I talked about order? Now it is time to connect both of these. There are two types of people in the workplace. People thriving on order and people thriving on chaos. People thriving on order expect tickets and clear instructions. People thriving on chaos enjoy lack of structure, and like to be left alone to decide what needs to be done. The first type is more fit for large corporations, while the second is best fit for startups. The first type makes a living, the second type makes a fortune, because the first type is way too common, and common means replaceable. How to build a problem-solving attitude, you ask? It's easy, side projects. Develop tools, learn topics outside of what is taught at the university, do some research and publish it on your personal blog. All of these actions will set you apart from the rest because most students are focused on either partying or simply doing what is needed to pass and not more. But you are not like that. Cut from a different cloth or a different breed to most. They don't make men like me anymore. I'm a dying breed. And if you are curious about what projects can you work on that are going to differentiate you from the rest, check out my video on side projects that I will link in the description. Third tip, be versatile and open-minded. Universities are not well known for keeping up with the latest trends and for a good reason. They are meant to teach you fundamentals and not abstractions. Whether you choose fundamentals or abstractions, the same point remains true. You must keep seeking as much knowledge as possible and be open to learning topics outside of your main interest. This comes more naturally to me because I was never the kind of person that liked to settle with a topic. Back when I was starting, at the beginning of my career, I was exploring offensive security, malware analysis, reverse engineering, programming, cloud security and security engineering, and even cryptography. I was fascinated about everything and I wanted to learn as much as possible. 
However, over the years, I have started moving more towards security engineering, cloud security and automation, as well as building teams. Regardless, my period of experimentation allowed me to build a repertoire of skills that still serve me well to this day. When you are younger, you should focus on exploring several areas rather than sticking to one because it's too early to settle. People settle for one area for one of two reasons, either complacency or because they find an area that fits their personality like a glove. You may be lucky enough to be the second case early in your life, but I wouldn't count on that. Always be moving and always be learning. And to get this point across even better, I highly recommend that you check my other video called Avoiding the Experts Trap, where I talk about the evolution of cybersecurity, how experts became obsolete over the years, crazy job specifications, and even what is the future of cybersecurity. And as usual, I will leave the link in the description. Tip number four, study to learn, not to pass. I still remember having this exchange of words with a colleague of mine back when I was in university. Why don't you take the time to learn and understand this better? Uh, pfft, don't worry, mate. I will have time once I finish university. I personally hated my time in university because I didn't party and I was never part of groups and clubs within university. I was laser focused and hell bent on finishing university and getting my degree because I just wanted to start working and making my own money. I will never know how different my life would have been. But suffice to say that the subjects I cared about, I studied religiously and I became obsessed with understanding them inside out. Some subjects such as physics and mathematics are nuisances that you have to deal with that will most likely be forgotten or at the very least not used for the rest of your life. Other subjects such as fundamentals of programming languages, operating systems, networks, etc. will be invaluable. So make sure that you take the time to learn them inside out. Abstractions can only be understood if they lie on a solid foundation of fundamentals. And besides, the time is going to pass regardless, so make sure you use it wisely. Fifth and final tip, do not ignore soft skills. I feel like I just shot myself in the foot previously because I said I didn't waste time with parties or university groups. And here I am preaching about soft skills. Soft skills were never something I cared much about until much later in my life. And I can say that I deeply regret that. There is a fine balance between being a party animal and a total outcast. And most of us will swing in the direction of one of these two. I have lived most of my life under two wrong assumptions. The first assumption was that if I spend my time partying and socializing, I will never be successful. And the more time I spend studying and practicing, the more successful I will be. And the second assumption was that being social is overrated and totally irrelevant. The truth is that more time working does not really translate into performance. And your capacity to connect with people will dictate most of your success in life, be it in your career or intimate relationships. If you watched my other video named the top five commandments of an elite cybersecurity professional, you know that success in interviews is about social and not technical prowess. Soft skills are a topic that is big enough for another video, but I will urge you, and for the sake of credibility, assume that I am 80 years old with shaky hands and a trembling voice. Do not ignore social skills and learn how to connect with people. I have let that part of me atrophy most of my life and I have faced multiple challenges because of that. You cannot develop the social muscle overnight by reading a bunch of books. It just doesn't work like that. And for that reason, you need deliberate practice. So practice. For the ones wondering how, build a social circle of like-minded people, attend some university events, and if you can manage, join a local club at your university that aligns with your objectives and interests or serves them in any way. As an example, you can join a public speaking group in your university. And public speaking is going to be invaluable for your career. Trust me on that. And I'm starting to think that I should trademark the trust me on that. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. And most students forego the necessary preparation in the hopes that once they have the diploma in their hands, everything will be just fine. One of the biggest problems with the education systems of most, if not all countries, is not that they are outdated, but that they condition students to expect someone to hold their hands at all times. Growing up, you are told what to do by your parents, 
by your school teachers, and then finally by the university teachers. There is always someone guiding you up to the point of joining the job market, at which point the manager and the company are the ones telling you what to do. The reason why new grads face disappointment and frustration when joining the job market is not because universities didn't prepare them, but because they were conditioned to live in autopilot and so they did. People following the traditional path leave educational institutions lacking street smarts, which is why many end up working for the dropouts. The best time to start preparing was 20 years ago, the next best time is now. And you can start preparing by doing one or more of the following. Studying topics outside of the main syllabus, building an online portfolio with a blog, a GitHub account, and even social media, such as Twitter, which is quite popular with cybersecurity professionals, building a problem solver mentality with side projects and research, considering working abroad, and I've talked about this extensively before on another video, which I will link in the description, and finally learning how to connect and cooperate with other people. And that is it Spartans, five things I wish I knew back when I was a computer science and cybersecurity student. Before I end the video, there are two topics I must mention briefly. The first one is comments and DMs on social media. I want to thank all of you for the kind words. People have reached out to me through Twitter, through Facebook, and even my personal Instagram. The feedback has been quite amazing and I really enjoy answering your questions. It is important that my content touches and addresses problems that are faced by aspiring and even existing cybersecurity professionals. And based on the feedback, I can tell that it is the case. Between my main job, preparing the video for the next week, and also my personal life, it is hard for me to answer to all of your comments and questions in a timely manner, but rest assured, they will be answered. I usually wait for the comments and questions to come in and accumulate, so that then I can sit for a few minutes or perhaps a few hours to address them. So keep them coming, folks. The next topic I want to bring up again, actually, is the contest to win a one hour free coaching call with me. I have received many emails up to this point. Most of the questions are quite expected. Topics tend to repeat themselves, but there are a few that stand out. If you are hearing about this for the first time, don't worry because there is still one more week for you to message me. So do it today. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay safe, stay paranoid.